Hi everybody, welcome to the basement studio. I sure do hope the electric company keeps pumping out the electricity because I have lots of neat blue lights and green lights and stuff on the screen and whatever. Hope that keeps going. Fortunately, my phone's battery powered, but it won't be able to hear anything if all the digital technology turns off. Today, I thought we would work on how to hear the scale and the melody in a tune to help you identify what key you were in and what patterns to use. Um, when I'm picking off a tune off of the internet or off of a CD or an MP3, immediately I can tell what time signature it's in. Uh, the band hopefully is doing a good job, or the orchestra, if I'm listening to a classical song, uh, is doing a good job of beaming that time out. And they're doing that because of a one, two, three, four, a pulse that's going on. And I'm really keen on hearing that. So your job in listening, can you just turn on something on your CD this week? Or listen to the radio and can you hear what's that pulse okay what I've noticed is the bass player lands an awful lot on beat one 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 okay so be listening for that the next trick is to figure out the key uh, so I'm listening and identifying right along with the beats and the rhythms to hear that time signature I'm listening to, is it sounding bright and happy? Or is it dark, uh, sad, morose, uh, thoughtful? Okay. Or has it got that? Okay. That bright sound. So today, for ease, for any instrument, inst any instrumentalist that's following along, we're just going to work on a penta scale, and that's the first five notes, and this is the C major scale, a C major penta scale. So I want you to play along with me first and invest your ear in this. Can you play in tune if you're playing a string and, stringed instrument or you're playing a, um, an oboe, a reed instrument, um, if you're playing a trumpet? Can you really hear that sound of that and match the pitch? Ready? Up five, here we go. C, then D, then E, F, G. I'm going to hold the G and come backwards. Coming down. G, F. Let's do it again. Ready, go. I have just put this in a time signature. Could you tell I was in four? Okay, so listen. Three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So could you tell I played four quarter notes up, held a whole note, played four quarter notes down, held a whole note. Okay. We don't have to turn it into musical notation, but can you hear a pulse? Okay, all good music has a pulse, whether or not it's written down or not. Okay, it doesn't have to be read uh, or sheet music that's written down in order for it to have a uh, good texture. Did you notice the touch that I played with? Okay, I know it's a digital piano. It's basically a recording of a real piano, but by moving the notes around, da, 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 I'm trying to make it sing. Our job as musicians is to make that audience be engrossed uh, in imagination and enjoy experiencing the sound with us. So if we just play boring, where everything is perfect, it is still music. But I would argue it's bad music. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, if I play a melody using those five notes, so basically I'm just going to go up and down. Can you copy me? So here's me. I'm going to go two, three, four. Two, three. You try it. Ya, da, ba, 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 ba. And actually, I'll say another thing. Instead of playing it on your instrument, could you sing it, the pattern back with me? So let me play and you sing it back. If you cannot hear it, 
there is no way you can play it. So here's my pattern. Three, four. Go. Ba -da 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 -da. Did you hear that last whole note? Hold two, three, four. Also, use your intellect. Did I start on the lowest note and go up, or did I start on the high note and come down? And how many notes did I go? La, 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 la. I went up five. Did you notice what note doubled? Da, 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 da. It was the third note. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give another pattern. Let's sing it first and then play your instrument afterwards. You can pause the video and play along. Okay. Two, three, four. Okay. Ba -da, ba -da -da. I'm going to play it again. Did you hear that? Ba -da, ba -da -da. One, two, three, four, three. Okay, did you hear it coming back down to that? One, two, three. Okay. Um, let's try another one. Two, three, four. La da ba da da. Did you hear the five pitches? Ba da, ba da da. Okay, I'm gonna do that one again. Two, three, listen. Okay, can you play that back with me? Three, four. Okay, cool. What if I start on the highest note, the G, and we make up new melodies? Two, three, four. Oh, did you notice it was the same rhythm as our last song? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ba, da, ba, ba, ba. I came down five notes. Okay, so using logic, highest note. Next highest note, then down three, okay? Let's use this little thematic idea, which some musicians call a germ, okay? Not to be confused with a virus, okay? What if I go... It was the same notes, right? But I changed the rhythm. Two, three, four. Same thing. Okay. What if I use that and come up with another uh, variation on our theme? Two, three, four. Okay. Did you hear that the fourth note turned faster into eighth notes? Three, four. Let's combine those two last themes and make the third and the fourth note fast, and you get this. Two, three, four. Okay. Lots of nursery rhymes and beginning songs go up the five notes and down the five notes because it just sounds really good to our ears to be in a pattern that we know. The first Noel. Uh, let's see. Uh... Mary had a little lamb, the first three notes of the scale. Okay. Uh, even Twinkle, other than the first pattern, which went up five notes. So on your instrument without any sheet music, let's try some of those. Can we play the first note? Okay. How many notes did I go down, and how many notes did I go up, and I'm staying on the same five notes? One, two. Okay. We're in 4-4 four, four time. Notice 
We're starting before beat one. One, two. And my apologies, we're actually in three, four time. One, two. Can you hear me leaning on beat one? So beat one is louder. One, one. Okay, I'm trying to give the audience, give you the perception of the time signature, even though I'm not screaming out, hopefully at a concert. Hey, one, two, three, one, two. That'd be pretty embarrassing. Okay, what if we do... same notes as but it stops did you sing it la 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 so then you can play it okay what if we went on and the variation that only uses three notes. Well, what if we do this variation on Mary's Lamb and go Okay. Da 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 Now again, you're only using those five notes I gave you in the beginning. No extra black keys, no notes outside of that range, so C through G only. Um, so by simplifying, finding little tiny songs to work with, you can develop your ears. Now, I'm going to take Mary's Little Lamb, and do you hear me? What am I doing now? Did you hear that the pattern, instead of being bright and happy, got dark? How do you switch the C major pattern to C minor pattern? Can you mess around with on your instrument? Could you play the first five notes major? And can you figure out on your own? How do you make it minor? Can you investigate? Okay. What if we did... Uh... We just invented a new song, even though we use the same rhythm. Uh, what if we did? Okay, with that, I added a new note at the top. I went up five, up one more, and back to the fifth. Okay, can you figure that out? What if I made it minor and went... take it one step further. Here's a Middle Eastern scale. Can you hear something was wrong with that second note at the very end? One, two, so I'm referring to that as the second note. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Can you ear hear that and hear that it's wrong? It's different, okay? It's not what you were expecting. The trick in ear training is to hear the expectant and then hear the variations, those little black keys that aren't supposed to be in the keys of C, but Chopin and Bach and Beethoven thought that they were interesting too, and they would stick them in a melody sometimes when they play, and they would go up a scale, okay, and always end up coming back to a scale tone but using these as little modifiers, little adjectives, if you will, okay? So, that is our little lesson today. Can you copy what I did in C? Can you sing what you hear first and internalize it before you play it? Many of my students, I, I love working with young students, and they've only been playing the piano for a couple weeks, and they, Mr. Wayne, Mr. Wayne, I have to learn this song.
And they have heard that just like Jingle Bells or Star Wars, or sorry, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Star Wars. They've heard that a billion times because their little keyboards play it. And because it's already in their ear, they know what it sounds like. And so as soon as I play it, they instantly smile and go, I want to learn that. And then as soon as I show them how to do it, because there's a couple little tricks I, I can get them set up to play it, they can play it immediately. Why? Because the song is not foreign to them. Okay? If Mr. Wayne borrows a Russian song right now, um, the drums of Tampai, and I just made that up, okay? And, and I played that for you. There's no way that you would have any understanding of what that song sounded like because you've never heard it or experienced it before. As soon as I play this, somewhere in the back of your brain, some little cells fire and go like, oh, I love that song because I've heard it before, okay? And you're not nervous about playing it. What you want to teach yourself to do is can you hear this? And anywhere that I stop, as being natural and normal, and then you can figure it out. You can figure out any song that you hear. Uh, the cool trick that I have is that I hear this for any scale, so I don't care if we're in the key of C, or C sharp, or D, or E flat, or the scale of P. I hear tonic, and the chord related to it, and I hear all the other chords, and I hear all the melodies, Related to it, and then I hear all the extra color tones that I might add to that. So I actually hear every scale as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I hear every song as that. So as soon as the song comes on, I can go like, oh, that was five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three. Okay. Oh, you're an A flat. Oh, you're an E flat. Okay, and that's what I want to kind of work with you on developing that sense. Then, if you say, well, my ear, I don't really care to be an ear-trained player. I want to play classical music and read it. But I actually can see on the page, because I know the patterns, and if I see a C scale starting from the fifth note, and go G, F, E, D, C, G, F, E, I know that it's going to sound like... So again, working my ear is very helpful, because when I look at the music, I'm not afraid anymore, because the music is actually speaking sound to me. Um... And it's it's actually becoming language off of the page. Before I pick up my trumpet, my euphonium, my guitar, my piano, my bass, I can actually hear what I see on the page. And that's a very comforting place to be. So that's why I would recommend working on your ear skills as well as working on your written notational skills. Mr. Wayne has had a fun time with you. Hopefully you've enjoyed being in our, our wonderful room with our cool lights. Ooh, ah. See you guys.